So this is just a quick video for my Mern Stack playlist series to demonstrate how you can deploy them by using Render. Because in those playlists, I have deployed those apps using Heroku and Heroku no longer provides the free service to deploy these apps. Also, if you're new to these Mern Stack playlists, I would highly recommend if before following this playlist, please make sure that you are using all of the same versions of the dependency that I'm using over here in my package.json file for backend as well as for frontend as well. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to backend and server.js and over here right below our routes i'm going to import a variable called dir name and since dir name is already registered if i'm not wrong in the node so i'm going to name it dir name one so what is this variable so this variable signifies the current working directory so i'm just going to first do this deployment so that i can keep the deployment code separate from the rest of the code. All right, so this will take path dot resolve. And this path module comes from Node.js. Path, just like that. Now, since we are preparing our app for the production, we're gonna use a dot env variable called node env, and we're gonna set it to the production mode. So let me first define that variable. So I'm gonna name it node env and i'm gonna name it production so if we want to keep it in the development mode we can name it development but i'm gonna name it production for now since i'm preparing it for the production so i'm gonna check if process dot env dot node env is equals to production then we're gonna write our production code inside of it else else let's just do this app dot get slash api running successfully all right now instead of it i'm gonna say app dot use express dot static don't worry i'm gonna tell you everything let me write it out real quick and then i'm gonna tell you what's going on over here pass dot join and i'm gonna take dir name and I'm gonna join it with the build folder of our project. So frontend slash build. So what I'm doing over here is I'm establishing the path from the current working directory to the build folder of our frontend. So if you don't know what build folder is, so if you go to inside of our frontend, if we want to build our React project, we can go to the terminal and switch to frontend and say npm run build. This will start a production grade build of our app. Now, meanwhile, it's building. What I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna write a API call. So app dot get, and I'm gonna get the content inside of the index.html of our front end build folder. So let me just write it out real quick. So I'm gonna say strix for everything. Request comma response. And inside of it, I'm gonna say response dot send file. So I want to send this file to our front end when our app is successfully running. What we want to do is, we want to run that index.html file which will be inside of our build folder. So let's wait for this build command to get completed, then I'll show you what we're gonna do. You can see that it has started creating an optimized production build. 2000 years later. Okay, so finally our build has completed. Now, if you go inside of the build folder, you're gonna see there's a file called index.html, which contains the minified code for our app. So what we're gonna do over here is path.resolve from the current directory, dir name one, to, we're gonna go inside the front end, and then start the build folder. And then we will have the index.html file. So yeah, that's all that we needed to do. And now our app is ready to be hosted. But let's before that, let me show you how this app is gonna work. So if I go on and inside of our package.json, I have this script for starting our server. So if I type npm start, now you're gonna notice Oops, not in the front end, I mean, let's go to the back end. And now let's start it. 
Now, since our app is in the production mode, instead of showing us API is running, it should show us the index.js file. It should serve us the index.js file. So let's wait for it to start. All right, let's go to the browser and run localhost 5000. Okay, it still shows API is running successfully. Let me see what went wrong. Instead of running with uh, node one, I'll just try to run with just node. So backend slash server JS. Mm, okay, let's see. All right, awesome. In the localhost 5000, our app is running successfully. Let me try to log in. Great, our app has logged in successfully as well. All right, so now let's go on and deploy our app to render. So first of all, I'm gonna go to package.json and I'm gonna add a build script over here. So don't worry, I'm gonna explain you what's going on inside of it. So this build script, what it does is, is basically installs all of our dependency. First of all, we're doing npm install in our root. So it installs all of the dependency of our backend. And then we're gonna go and install npm install in our frontend folder, right? So it's gonna go on and install all of the dependency in our frontend folder. And after that, you can see over here, it's doing npm run build as I just showed you a few minutes ago that we need to build the frontend, right? So this is gonna do that for us automatically. So it's gonna go inside of the frontend folder and do npm run build, awesome. And that is all we need to do. But there's one thing that I want to tell you. If you're using an old project, just like I am over here, this project is almost two years old, right? So while deploying this project, you have to make sure all the dependencies that have become legacy over here and you know are no longer supported with the current node version, I have to add a tag over here. Most of you don't need to add this because it's gonna work with the latest projects. But for the older project, what you need to do is, after this npm install, you have to add dash dash legacy peer dependencies or I think it's depths legacy peer depths and you have to add the same thing for front end as well right over here cool so that's done now we're gonna go inside our front end folder as well and over here to make sure all of these front end dependencies who have gotten out of date or old we're gonna add a tag over here as well which is going to be dash dash open SSL legacy cell dash legacy dash provider same thing you have to do for this build command as well so that all of these Re react scripts are supported with the older version of these dependencies like react lottie and all of the other like chakra ui as well so after doing all of this you can quickly go on and push your app to a github repository for me this is my github repository that i've pushed all of my code into fine so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to render.com and this is the place where we will be hosting our app. So let's quickly go on and sign in. I'm gonna sign in with GitHub. There you go, we are logged in successfully and as you can see, we I have deployed a couple of projects before here as well. So now we have to click this new button and click on web service. Now this is what you have to do for modern stack apps. Now over here, you can quickly select your repository. So I'm gonna select my modern chat app repository. So connect. Now you can give a unique name to this. I'm going to give it talkative region. You don't have to change anything there. Branch, let it be root directory. We don't have to change runtime. Obviously our runtime is node since we are using JavaScript build command. Our build command was npm run build if you remember correctly. So I'm going to say npm run build. We just added a build command there, right? Now start command should be our, so we have added a start command in our app. So if you see, uh, start command is node backend slash server.js so i'm gonna quickly say npm start or you could have just added this line as well over here cool so yep we are supposed to use the free plan for this one let's go into advance okay here we're supposed to add our environment variables so i'm gonna quickly go to our dot env file and i'm gonna add all of these variables over here first of all the port which is 5000 then our Mongo URI. Let me just add this real quick and I'll be back. And that's it. I've added all of our variables over here. Now there's one more important thing that is left to do. As I mentioned, if you're using your old project to deploy it over here, so you're supposed to do these, add these tags over here, right? But if you're not adding these tags, that completely fine. This next step is not for you. But if you are adding these tags over here, then what you have to do, you have to check your current node version. So node dash V. 
So it's 18.16.1 for me and I have to copy this and then I'm going to go over here and add a new value over here with node underscore version. This will make sure that this project is compatible with your current node version. And again, I'm mentioning this most of the times you won't need to do this for the newer projects. You won't need to add these leg legacy peer depths tag over here and over here in the front end as well. So yeah, I think most of the work is done and we don't need to do anything over here. Auto deploy. Yes, we want it to deploy every time we make changes to our GitHub repository. And now we can just quickly go here and click create web service and it's going to start the deployment for our app. And yep, you see it's cloning our GitHub repository over here. Okay, fine. It has uh, run this build command as well over here. Let's see what happens. And yeah, you see it has started creating an optimized production build. All right. And this might take a little time to, you know, deploy. So let's wait. Three days later. And there we go. It shows that build is successful, but still it's showing deploying. Okay, let's wait for a little bit. Let's just try to click on this link and see if our website is live uh, or not. Okay, it's loading. Okay, yeah, now it will do that npm start command to start our server by using node backend slash server.js. All right. And yep, your service is live. Amazing. Let's go. Oh, that's great. Our website looks beautiful. Let's click on get user credentials and log in. And we are in. Amazing. So yeah, this is how you go on and deploy a Merge Stack app by using Render. Now, if you're coming from my older videos, that is Merge Stack videos, I have created a complete interview preparation series on my channel. So you can click these cards on the screen to follow it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such awesome videos.